So Bill and I were in a cotton field uh, that's pretty typical uh, in the Mid-South and East Central Arkansas, um, where we've got conventional tillage, um, where we put repull beds every year, uh, no cover crops implemented. And so we, we've got it on really tall beds. And so why is that? Well, I mean, let's, I mean, what's the reason for these tall beds and repulling them every year? Yeah, yeah as you mentioned, Matt, uh, this, this field is, is been in conventional tillage for who knows when, and very typical of fields here in Arkansas, the mid south, and even even uh, you know we get into Texas and out west. Nearly everybody grows cotton on a bed, and the main reason here, especially in the mid south, our infiltration rates are really low, so we have very poor in, internal drainage. So the only drainage we have is external, <coughs> and so to make sure we get water off because cotton doesn't like wet feet. Sure. Uh, getting water off is really more important than getting water on with irrigation. So we have to have a pretty tall bed because we have no internal drainage. Now, in the other field that we were in, uh, we've improved internal drainage. And so just a little bit of extra help on external drainage is all we need. So nearly every cotton field I've ever been in growing up and in my life has always been been on a bed just for the, the drainage aspect. Sure. But certainly, uh, you know, when we look at infiltration rates, and I know you've done a lot of, collected a lot of data on differences in water infiltration rates and all that, and we kind of see evidence of that when we, when we irrigate, is how fast the water goes through and how, how high it soaks up on the bed and so forth. There's, there's a lot of visual things that you can look at to kind of see what's going on that enhance or complement the scientific data that you take. Sure, absolutely. And oftentimes that's more important than more uh, 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 production practice changing than, than anything I could collect. Just oh. visually seeing water wick on top of the beds yeah. um, where, where it wasn't before and yeah. utilizing more water, just not but, let less water run out the bottom of the field. But a lot of times farmers see that, they don't know why it does that, they just know it does that. So then you know, the data you collect kind of complements that to let them know, okay, well that, you know, if they want to know why, that's right. why you can sure. tell them why. Yep. Absolutely. So a lot of times on our on our rooting knoll is going to look a little bit different on these plants. You want to? There you go. This is, this is very typical of a lot of conventional till cotton in Arkansas. So here's the soil surface, and and we got oh about about. Six inches yeah. is where most of, most, of our, most of our roots are. When we dug this up, I had a hard time keeping it together, you know, compared to the, um, compared to the no-till cover crop, but um, you've got a little bit of aggregation, um, but not, these pads aren't holding together very well. And so I don't see many uh, root channels, many roots. You've got some fine hairs there a little bit. Um, but when you put the shovel in the ground, so there's a soil surface here, about six inches. You you met a great deal of resistance, didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. We hit that hard pan. Um, sometimes I've been in fields that ain't even at six inches. Sometimes yeah. it's less than six. Um, but yeah, you, we hit that clay hard pan, and um, you know I weigh 185 pounds, and I couldn't get the shovel to go down any further. Um, so that that's our conventional soil there. So Bill, now we're in, in a field that's had cover crops and no-till implemented for about five years, is that right? Yes. Yep. Um, and so the beds look very different from what we were just in. So uh, let's, let's talk about uh, why that is and kind of how we manage it a little bit differently. Yeah, a lot of times it's very common in fur irrigated where we start off with a really big bed and by the time we get third or fourth year we're just almost flat. And uh, again, you know, most of the time when we grow cotton, we grow cotton on a bed. And it, when we furrow irrigate, it, it, it's really kind of a challenge to get water to go down when it's really flat. And so with a furrow runner plow, that gives us a little extra channel and a little bit of help on the external drainage. We can irrigate well. And then just that little extra help on external drainage to go along with our greatly improved internal drainage is really all we need. to to get excess rainwater off and then get our irrigation water where it, where it needs to be when it needs to be and not over water and not under water. Okay. Yeah, and so the soil properties are gonna be a lot different here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up 
uh, some, some soil and a, a cotton plant, and we can okay. take it back to the shade and talk about it. All right, sounds good. You know, I already see earthworm channels and other things in, in that soil that we got from the, the no-till, don't, don't Yep, we? yep. So this is uh, the no-till cover crop. We've got some, you know, some, we still got some cover crop residue there. But you can still see there's a ton of roots um, at the soil surface here. Um, you know, you, you may not think that's a big deal, but when we're talking about infiltration, I think all the magic happens in the, the top two inches because if we can keep that layer from from silting over, from sealing over. Uh, we're getting some infiltration down at these deeper depths. Um, and so the soil's holding together and um, aggregating better uh, than in the conventional till soil. And so all these root channels, um, it looks like an earthworm channel there. Um, all these channels is just routes for water to soak in the ground um, and not run off the field. And so we can utilize that water uh, with our cash crop. So when you talk about everything, you know, the... So there's some good roots here. Yeah. Good channels. When you flip that over. And keeping that soil covered, keeping it armored, has, has a big, makes a, a big difference on the soil temperature. Absolutely. And keeping it cooler, um, uh, just a friendlier environment for, for our soil microbes, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I've been in fields where Cover crop versus no cover crop, you know, it, it may be maybe 92 outside, but the no cover crop, uh, bare soil will be 101 degrees, 102. Yeah. Um, and you'll be about what the temperature is outside in the cover crop side. Okay. Uh, and so, and it's in some cases, it, a little bit cooler. So it's, that's a big deal when you're talking about a earthworm or soil microbe. Yeah. 